Hey everybody, Dylan here. Welcome back to Pyre. Having overcame, that's actually grammatically incorrect, right? Having overcome the withdrawn or a pitched battle, you and the others have some moments to recover from the ordeal and the relative safety of the black wagon. So, uh, uh, when can we get out of here? What green tail? Had enough of Udmilhi's hospitality for the time? Oh, Jody, yeah, thanks, I'm good. The reader and the stars will point the way as ever. It's just, so far, we've kept on going north. If that's the case again this time. The Sea of Solas spreads north and west for here, from here, for untold leagues. I could not tell you when last a vessel dared to sail those waters. The Sea of Solas is an impossible oceanic expanse pockmarked by crude little islets. Attempts to sail across the Daran Sea do not usually turn out so well. Tizo asserts himself during the conversation. What is the matter, little one? <laughs> He's trying to get you to come look at something outside the wagon. Reader, please go see what he wants. You excuse yourself and follow the imp into the dark of night. You find Faye and the lone minstrel already gazing up at the stars. Can you not read the stars yourself then, Mr. Minstrel? I fear it is not so simple as matters of can or cannot when it comes to me, Faye. We shall see what the reader has to say, for this is her charge. And here she is, in fact. Thank you for fetching her, Tuzo. Screeha! He's happy to have helped. Reader, it would seem the skies have cleared to some extent. Please look upon the stars and see where they compel us to go next. You look towards the heavens. Seek now your destination. Um, hmm, where? Eh, eh, eh. Yep, further north, Oris, the Azure Star. Okay, that's pretty freaky, but cool looking. The rights beckon you still further north, towards the middle of the Sea of Solas. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> You're joking, right, sister? <laughs> Does the reader seem the joking type to you, Green Tail? We do not argue with the stars. <laughs> you talk like we can just go right, right out into the water. <laughs> Pardon my interruption, though. Perhaps we can. Uh, say what? <laughs> my client, Sandalwood. He has a way of anticipating such eventualities. West of here lies a place called Big Bertrude's. The proprietor is an old companion of his. She may be able to assist us. Small bog dweller outpost at the edge of the sea. All sorts of contraband used to come through here, though some of it fatal if touched or inhaled. Edwin's smile returns. Well, that sounds like our best shot right now. Let's pack it up and move as soon as possible. Oh, got some talking to do. Okay, Minstrel, what you thinking about? Greetings, reader. It is good that you are here, for there is something I wish to tell you privately. Do you have a moment? I shall not keep you long, though I know your time is precious. Of course I have a moment. You bid him to continue and make clear your interest in whatever he has to say. Very well, and thank you for your time. And I should further note, matters that pertain directly to the rights I must reveal to you alone, for thus I am obliged. In any case, when you confronted with the withdrawn and which Udmilhi, you might recall she tended to invoke a certain name. He is Luck, the Astral Born. I hesitate to say it even now. You would be forgiven if you took the ravings of Udmilhi for near mere nonsense. However, her words, as it turns out, ring with a certain truth. Before the union of the eight scribes, when first they found themselves here in the downside, the land was even less hospitable, if that can be believed. It was ruled over by the Greater Titans. The one called Yezlak was the eldest and most fearsome of the lot. The Greater Titans are colossal monsters that once roamed the downside. The scribes together slew them one by one and through this forged their bonds. Just the same, the scribes managed to defeat it. They later used Yezlak's own hide and ichor to bind the Book of Rites. However, Yislak did not truly die, for by some accounts it seems to be incapable of death. 
The creature is regenerating even now, though very, very slowly. Its vow is to devour this land and everything in it. Only then can it return unto whatever plane that banished it to ours. So in a way, it is an exile, just like you. If ever should the creature be reborn, it shall be many ages hence. Thus the ravings of Udmilhi are more or less inconsequential for the while. Yet, the history of the Yislak is inexorably linked to the rites and therefore must be known. I trust your research of the book shall lead you to discover more in time. I hope all of this is of some reassurance, and now I leave you to your more immediate concerns. I shall go check to see how everyone is faring at the time. He heads out into the evening, bidding you a good rest of the evening. Huh. Alright then. Pretty cool stuff. Let's continue the journey. Two big birdies. Yeah, baby. Let's head on down to Big Bertrude's. Barbecue and foot massage. This is the place. Let us go to see my client's companion as soon as you are ready. Well, I'm ready, so guess let's do it. Big Bertrudes is a sickly gathering of bog dwellers who stay within shadows, yet you can feel their eyes surveying everything. The lone minstrel steps forward. Sandalwood sent us. These words are enough to make the bog dwellers snap to attention. They emerge from the mud and dark and begin inspecting your black wagon with their strange tools. One of the bog dwellers slithers forth. She's larger than the rest and leaves no doubt that she commands the other. Thou speakest the name Sandalwood. We would know his whereabouts. Reveal them to us. Good day to you, Big Bertrude. It is a pleasure to meet you at last, for Sandalwood always spoke highly of you and your handiwork. Much feared and respected for sorcery. Ah, he did, did he? In turn, we know who thou must be. Yet thou speakest of the past. Sandalwood, doth he yet live? Speak plainly and quickly. To be quite frank with you, madam, I do not know for certain, for I have been apart from him for some time, carrying out his will. Though I have every faith that I, Sandalwood, lives, as for his current whereabouts, I understand that he awaits us somewhere near Walk Wakingwood beyond the waters, Labyrinth of Forest on the western half of Black Basin. You know their way around it. We wish to seek him there, though as you can see, our wagon is ill-suited for the task. The one called Bertrude frowns at this, studying the lone minstrel all the while. Ah, indeed. Believe us. Return at dawn. That is all. By your grace, Big Bertrude. The lone minstrel turns away, but Hedrin stops him. Hold on, are you sure about this? Leaving the wagon and their care? All should be in accordance with my client's plan. You keep calling Sandalwood your client. He must reward you well. I, in a manner of speaking, he helped me find a sense of purpose I thought lost. Edwin nods at this, then turns to you. Well, my friend, I guess we'll see what happens, right? I'm off to let the others know. You find yourself with time for your vocations while the bog dwellers go about their business. I think we're to read the book again, right? I feel like we just read the book every time. We can mentor for... Yeah, I think we just read every time. Right? I think we just always read? You excuse yourself from the others to go pour over the Book of Rites and its mysteries. Through greater understanding comes the reader's influence. Focus on which aspect of the Book of Rites? Um, I think we want quickness, having played a little bit even more. You concentrate on your knowledge of the eight scribes and how together they compose the Book of Rites among their many feats. Inspiration comes to you in a flash, whether from the book or from within, you cannot tell. You gain the reader's influence, Celerity. Well, everybody knows Celerity's overpowered, so... Continue the journey. Got nothing else to do. The Lone Minstrel finds you early the next day. Reader, it is ready. Please come have a look. The others are, are already there. Lone Minstrel beckons you to come see the wagon. Step inside. Oh, hey, swagtastic! 
The black wagon appears different now than it did even a day before. The hull is fully sealed and reinforced, and all manners of nautical equipment adorns the port side. Ah. Uh, wow. You people seeing this? I'm gonna have a look around. The wagon should be sit fit for sea voyage. Let us depart at your earliest convenience. Oh, uh, what about Big Bertrude? She then appears, as if on cue. Tell that sandalwood he owes us twice over. If I may, Big Bertrude, you could tell him yourself if you wish to accompany us in our voyage north. Our group could welcome someone of your vast experience. Dare thee make flirtations upon us. Uh, no, I... Enough. But should ye see that sandalwood, tell him also to come and visit us again. Now, be gone from here and tell no one we were paid in favors. She slithers off without another word. Soon, the lone minstrel breaks the silence. We are fortunate that she assisted us, but we should go just as she said. I know the navigational controls and shall explain. Oh, this is so exciting. I don't know how to swim. Oh. Scree! He is also excited. I am beginning to feel ill already. Your black wagon became seaworthy. The Sea of Solace awaits. That's exciting. You've not been to this reach of the downside. All right. I guess we ride. Into the fucking ocean. Oh shit! Wow, that's so awesome. God damn, this game is good and pretty and amazing. I love it. Everything about this game is great. Worm Golf. You and your companions watch the sea as your wagon rolls over the gentle waves. We've crossed into Worm Golf. I hope that all of you are acclimating well. The tempestuous Sea of Solace lies beyond this de death still body of water. Exiled worms from the Sea Dominion naturally congregate around here. There is no acclimating to these worm infested waters. We risk everything to sail here. Known for being reckless and single minded, they are perfectly suited to fill the Commonwealth's front lines. As long as we follow the cold current Big Bertrude indicated, we shall be safe. Uh, if the next rat's in the middle of the sea, how will our adversaries meet us there? They shall find their way as we find ours. It is all part of the scribe's design. Now, reader, please confirm the next point on our sea journey. We seek the Hulk of Oris. Ooh. This is awesome. Onwards to Outer Solace. I like that our wagon can just jump in the water, because that's what wagons do, right? Like, that's totally normal. That, you know, weird transforming sorcery black wagon nonsense vehicles can just Tony Hawk their way through the deepest and most terrible oceans of the universe. Yeah, that seems legit. The wagon continues rolling gently across the waves, which seems to you a welcome change of pace after having come from flagging hands not long ago. However, Jodariel seems more concerned now than before and paces ceaselessly. When she notices Ruki, she stops him for some questioning. Greentail, how is he doing? Uh, who, had one? Uh, he's pretty much the same. Been up all night, retching into the waters if I had to guess. Uh, his first time out at sea. His first. She turns to you. Reader, please check on Hedwin when you have the opportunity. He requires our support and we require his swift recovery. You wish them a good afternoon as you go to check up on the others in the group. Later, you find Hedwin looking out of sorts. Oh, hello my friend, it's just... The sea hasn't been good for me, I guess. Honey, all this trouble. Just to get back to the commonwealth of all places. Hey, tell me something. What do you miss the most about that place? Hmm. Yeah, I think we missed our books. This game is about books, so why not just go all books? Tell him you miss your book collection most of all, after having taken many pains and risks to put it together. <laughs> uh, I figured as much. Bet they burned all your books, didn't they? Those scum. 
Anyway, I, I'll be fine, I think. Thank you for checking up on me. You sense he wishes to be alone. There's not much to be done for him now. It sounds like we're letting him die. Pierce Hedwin is too ill to conduct the next rite. Oh, awkward. May he soon get well. I am sorry for my interruption, reader. Please again confirm the next point on our ver voyage. Oh, man. Onwards to the Sea of Solace, and then I think we're going to be close to the place where we do the rite. Oh, my God. It's so pretty. It's so colorful. Not what I expected when they talked about it being a terrible worm-infested place. Oh, by the scribes! The sea, I didn't know it was so beautiful! Having escaped the waters of Worm Gulf, you now can see what must be the Hulk of Ores, far on the horizon. Not everyone has taken well to the sea voyage, however. Rome? He's wondering if Edwin is okay. He requires further rest, Tizo. All we can do is wish him a swift recovery. Reader, madam. From this point, our voyage must diverge from Bertrude's extractions. Please consult with your companions about which course to take. Hmm. Under King Pass, we can be blessed by the eight scribes. Tizo wants to go fishing. Yeah, we'll go. We'll go the. Uh, we'll go the blessed way, because I mean, Faye was right last time she said that. So, I believe her. She seems legit. You find Faye gazing down into the depths. The water is so very beautiful, and yet it's very dangerous? They always said it's very dangerous if you fall in or drink enough of it? But the scribes, they have protected us, and they are watching, I just know. Even out here, in the waters of Under King Ores, they urge us on. I feel it, I just know. Uh, the eight, seventh of the eight scribes of the Book of Rites, known as the Persevering, or the Sea Sojourner. There's no denying the North Current sends you quickly on your way. Perhaps it's the thought of reaching land again, but you can sense a spring in everyone's step. Plus two quickness, fuck yeah. That is dope. That's way better than whatever money we were gonna get with a fish. Fuck fishing. Fuck fishing, get religion. Get Jesus, get Buddha. At last you arrive at the Hulk of Ores, after journeying across the sea. It seems the next ride is to commence here soon. There is no sign of your next adversaries yet. Alright. Well, let's see what we got in the black wagon. We've got... Nautical Bell. We've got the Beyonder Crystal. Looks like nobody needs it. We've got another page of the Book of Rites. Down the river, in the words of Gol Golothanian. Hey, I did this time. The Master General. The Emperor Solium Mur knew naught of this, of course. His expedition yielded not the treasure he desired, but brought him closer to his country than he had ever been before. As he traveled down the river Sclorian in pursuit of greed, he found instead an inkling of shame. He saw the sunken faces of his people, heard their words for him. In time, he could not ignore it, and it proved more than he could bear. The river finally claimed him, his belongings, and his retinue. Once the people heard, I understand they cried with joy. Perhaps he ought to have perished, but the mercy shown to him, I think, is what transformed him. Ooh. That's cool. What's up, Jodariel? Reader, a moment of your time. You ask what's on her mind. Edwin. He's beginning to recover from his illness, however. Its sudden onset serves as a reminder, I believe. I have known Edwin since he was a child. Even now, I hesitate to say that he has grown. Nevertheless, there are such things that I could never say to him directly. For instance, I struggle with his confidence at time. Whether he leads us to our freedom or our doom, I am ambivalent. Speak not a word of this to him, of course, in case that is unclear. I shall tell him in my own way if and when the time requires. In any case, when times remind me of his mortal weaknesses, I end up having to consider what should happen should we become separated permanently. She trails off a while. What I mean to say is... You should know that I am fully pledged now to this quest of ours, whether Hedwin is the one to lead us to its end or not. I have my reasons. One of them is him. I expect the same holds true for you. That is all I wish to say. Take care, reader. She nods and brushes past you towards the door. Well, that was certainly dramatic. 
It's a good uh, good spot to leave off before we hit the rights. Oh, let's do a little shopping. Oh, hey, you guys. Funny running into you out here right in the middle of the drink. Know what I mean? Not a lot of customers today, so have a look. I'll give you a good deal. God damn it. Well, we definitely want more Stardust. Like, we just always want to buy the Stardust, basically. When Aura Casting raises maximum range, plus two Presence, plus two Hope, move faster, plus two damage. I mean, this is pretty much the only one. Yeah, fuck it. We'll just... Take the Stardust, man. Stardust OP. We could raise the level of his. You like. Okay, so Headwind can't come this time. Which means we're probably going to want to run Bay. We'll get her up that and actually increase the value of that. That's very unfortunate. Um. Yeah, we can let her be our machine gunner. Cool. All right, tell your friends about us, because I already told mine. All right, so we've gone to the slug market. We're, we've got everybody up. Headwind is sick, and we're ready for the next ride. We'll do that on the next episode of Pixel Pals Let's Play. I will see you guys there. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.